Beard is on the starting lineup for the Auburn Tigers being introduced here at Beard Eves Coliseum. Truly, this is an Auburn team that identifies with the student body. Cliff Ellis has energized this program with his Cliff Dwellers, a student body much more active than they have been in past years. LSU does lead this series, and they have won seven of the last eight games, including one here last year with a reasonably healthy Randy Livingston making a key steal of Lance Wing. Yeah, Tim, you talked earlier in a few minutes ago about what they've been able to do with the involvement of the fans and the students here at Auburn. I like what they've done in this corner, this end zone, where they've dropped that curtain and eliminated those seats up top and put the cliff dwellers in there with those orange shirts. In fact, we were presented with a couple of cliff were. dweller shirts beforehand. Just didn't go with our ties. Well, though. and they were both double XL. There they are. They were both double XL, which concerned both of us as to our physique, but we're uh, obviously understanding that it's 100% cotton and will shrink. Our officials for this afternoon's game, we are talking about all-star quality. John Clockerty, Jim Burr, and Don Rutledge. A lot of years between the three of those guys. Jimmy Burr, by the way, was injured in that Kentucky LSU game on Tuesday. Is playing with a slightly pulled calf muscle in his right calf, so even the officials can play through pain. And tip is controlled to Auburn. Flanagan taking it right to the hoop. Well, he went right by neighbors like he was glued to the floor. Auburn's press immediately. 1-2-1-1 one, 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 zone press. And they drop back man-to-man, -man, Tim. After the problems that LSU had against Kentucky's press, it's come as no surprise to the Tigers. Ronnie Henderson gets the tip in of Rogers Washington's long-range bomb. I don't think Ronnie Henderson gets credit enough for his outstanding rebounding ability. He's a great leaper. Not only can he score, but he can also go inside and get a lot of rebounds. Burke, the center, will play more of a high post at times for Auburn. Slide out and allow guys like Weems to get free underneath. He missed that one. Ford with the outlet to Ronnie Henderson. That'll be a player control foul against Henderson. Well, we've talked about this league being a guard-oriented league. Watch a couple of good ones here. Flanagan strong to the basket. Went inside by neighbors. A little hesitation to go up and in. West Flanagan, one of the better guards, Tim, I think this league has to offer. Junior out of Parkview High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Again, the drive allowing the open shot for Ray Donald. It doesn't fall. Deuce Ford, a physical backcourt performer. Forced to play the three spot today. And he can nail them, believe me. His game started coming around after the Alabama game. He grew in confidence after that 22-point win against the Crimson Tower. And that's where he started. He started the last five games. He played in the first two and then started the last five, and he's been terrific, averaging 11. LSU's trying to look at that Kentucky game as an aberration, something that can happen against a team that powerful. The lineup change that Brown made prior to Alabama going small has helped LSU after a painful pre-SEC schedule. They lost to a number of teams they felt they should have beaten. Roman Rochinko hits the three. But in truth, everyone points to Livingston and the injury problems he's had. Deuce Ford was not healthy. Dwayne Spencer was not healthy. They are finally getting some minutes themselves. The pick and roll. Burke underneath. Double teamed. Count it. And a foul. Burke was a little hesitant to roll to the basket when Flanagan had the ball. He got there, and then the pass was a little late in arriving. Watch this again. Now, there's the roll, the screen. Now, Flanagan kind of lobs the ball, which enables the defense to collapse on him. See Rubchenko on the back side, and he's the one who commits the foul. Was it he that got it or Ford? It was, uh, it was Rubchenko that got it. His okay. first. Uh, At Burke, the junior from Cape Coral, Florida. And Caldwell comes into the game for the first time. Derek Caldwell, the freshman out of Brantley, Alabama. Under pressure. Again, put forth by Cliff Ellis. Neighbors handles it well. He's a smart young player. Uh, you can get uh, Randy Livingston to say a lot of nice things about both Gene Neighbors and Maurice Carter. We'll no doubt see playing time today. Ruchinko with a drive. And fouled on the runner by Pat Burke. Tim, you know, Roman 
Shevchenko has really elevated his game from last year. I think the fact that Livingston coming back being such a big question mark for LSU this year. Somebody had to step up and assume some offensive responsibility, and Rutchenko is one of those guys. Indeed. Out of Kirkassi, the Ukraine. It's a young man that uh, did not play well prior to the SEC, largely because he didn't know if he would be allowed to stay in the country. Only got assurances that he could stay through June prior to the month of January. Well, the US, U.S. Immigration Naturalization Service sort of gave him an extension because his grades were so good. He's That's working right. toward his degree, and he will graduate in June. Quite a compliment to him. Those are tremendous concerns for anyone in that given situation. Burke a little farther away from the basket than he'd like to be. Flanagan drives again, and on the reach, the foul is whistled. Pretty good move by Flanagan that time. He saw Henderson flying at him on the wing, and when he did, he just simply went to put the ball on the floor and went right by. Good pass by Burke to skip pass across. Look at Henderson come. Good fake by Flanagan. He goes strong to the basket and see Ford on the arm. Deuce picking up his first foul. Washington comes away with it. Here's Ford. Off the back iron. Rupchinko with the long rebound. Neighbors on the wing. Burke calls it down for Auburn. There he is. Weems can't hit. Burke, the offensive glass. Oh, the iron unkind to Pat Burke. Oh, I've missed that. <laughs> Henderson. So both Henderson and Weems have come up dry from beyond the arc. Caldwell with the dump down. Rubchenko brings it down. Oh, what a transition game this has become all of a sudden. And the tip in by Henderson. A couple of his have come off the offensive glass. And Tim, once again, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this and emphasize that the fact that Ronnie Henderson is one of the better rebounding guards the SEC has. 22nd timeout called by Auburn. So the LSU Tigers come out of the gates very active on the offensive boards and have a seven-point lead. And the 22nd timeout called by Cliff Ellis. Don't forget, coming up Wednesday night, Quick Rick's Cats taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia smarting after their loss in Knoxville yesterday. Many would say that one of the few opportunities Kentucky has of possibly losing a game in this league could come inside Tubby's gym there in Athens, Georgia. Yeah, there aren't many spots left in the Southeastern Conference schedule. I think a lot of people have shots at Kentucky the way they've been playing recently. You look at the numbers, LSU, four for 10, but getting more opportunities on the offensive glass. Auburn is an offer from beyond the arc. LSU has hit two. Donald gets it inside to Franklin Williams. Double teamed. Auburn is stronger up front. They'll wave that one off. John Clockerty senses an over and back. Much to the chagrin of the Auburn faithful. Well, once again, you'll see the good move down the inside. Franklin Williams trying to group Chinko and Henderson up. Might have got it bumped a little bit. Burke up over the back. That's the second foul on Burke. LSU has the lead early on here at Auburn. Here in the South, we have a tradition of service you won't find anywhere else. And at Bell South, we're helping businesses serve their customers more effectively every day. With more advanced technology than ever before. Business is growing faster here than in any other part of the country. It's easy to see why. Bell South, it's all here. It sounds like a cliche, but we literally wanted to put luxury at the customer's fingertips. Power leather trim seats with driver's side memory. Press here. Dual climate zones. Push here. I think probably the biggest challenge was how to turn such a concept into a luxurious space for seven passengers. Well, open here. 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 And here. <laughs> I guess we did it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer... Peter! What? Peter, try it backwards. Certainly. Question is that, be to not or be to. Peter, I meant the pizza. 
I knew that. Stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With cheese baked right into the crust, you've got to try it backwards. Hot pizza of May, where stuff the love you. Every Chevrolet dealer pays the factory the exact same price for their cars. Because Larry Puckett is located in Prattville, and they don't employ a massive sales force, their overhead costs are small compared to bigger dealers. What does this mean to you? Larry Puckett's prices are lower. The first time I bought a car, I shopped around, and then I came to Larry Puckett, and I got a good deal, and I have bought three more since then, and I don't shop around anymore. Larry Puckett does let you do the talking. Larry Puckett Chevrolet Geo. 12-5, LSU with the lead. Opening moments of our Sunday afternoon game. Tim Brando along with Larry Conley. On this uh, first Sunday without benefit of football, some excitement from the SEC's Western Division. A sign of things to come in this most competitive side of the SEC. Ronnie Henderson hits the tray. Tim has a nice job by neighbors penetrating to draw that Auburn defense, and all three have converged on him, and Henderson stood right outside the arc and buried it. Tigers, the LSU Tigers, off to a great start. They seem to be playing with a lot of purpose, uh, mm -hmm. Larry. Many times when you lose a star like a Livingston, everyone emotionally is more involved, and uh, that's what I sense early in this game from the Tigers. You know what I was more interested in is the psyche of this club after that Kentucky game. I mean, they come out here and obviously just put it behind them, ready to play. Dale Brown, I think, summarized it best after the game against Kentucky. He felt as bad as things were at halftime, they came out and they played hard in the second half and it allowed young guys like Maurice Carter and Rogers Washington, albeit mop-up time, an opportunity to grow and understand that they could compete against the best in this league. And Rick Pitino did call off the dogs. He stopped pressing in the second half. And, uh, and that allowed LSU to at least, to some extent, get over that barrage that they had faced in the opening half. Surrendering 86 in one half is not something you like to deal no, with. No, no. Regardless of the level of the opposing team. Watch Flanagan. Quickness. He can get up and down the floor. Deuce Ford on the other end. Good defensive job. Good transition by Auburn getting back to shut that one down. Henderson. Oh, he's so good. He is so good. We were having some fun with him prior to the start of the game. Said, so, you know, you may need to score 46 today. He smiled and winked, and uh, you know, there's always that that thought process. This is a guy that can post up numbers in a big way very quickly. Nice dump to neighbors. You know what? Now there's the score. All right, number one score in the Southeastern Conference. Could have taken it to the basket. Gave it up to his fellow guard, and neighbors laid it in. Good unselfish play. Tigers by a dozen over Auburn. Jefferson down on the low post trying to post up Alvin Jefferson. Donald's runner won't go. And Ford, again with the reach in, will commit the foul. He and Rupchinko now each with a pair of fouls. Watch again Auburn getting the ball down to the inside. Watch Ronnie Henderson come away with it. Neighbors on his left. A little pressure on the defense. Flanagan had to go and get Henderson. No in his penchant for shooting. He gave it up to Neighbors for an easy one. Ronnie Henderson. League's leading score. Lance Weems coming back into the game, replacing Caldwell. Ray Donald, the senior out of Anderson, South Carolina Junior College in Pensacola, Florida, at the strike. Junior College All-America in South Carolina. 90% at the strike. He's hit, after that one, 37 of 41 to lead the conference. Nineteen to nine, LSU with the lead. Well, LSU having no problem at all with this Auburn press. They're just going over the top. A little mix up there between Ford and Henderson. Flanagan gets an easy one, counted and a foul. That's an example of where a young guy can hurt you on the break. Neighbors should have pulled up and not committed that personal. Tim, you were reading my mind is exactly what I was going to say. Wes Flanagan, the junior from Little Rock, got out in front. He simply outran the LSU team to the other end, and Neighbors commits the unpardonable sin of fouling and allowing a guy to get an easy basket. Well, we haven't worked together yet, so it's good to know in our first game together we're thinking the same way. <laughs> I don't know. That may be bad. <laughs> Two on one for four. Great pass. To, oh, Henderson dropped it. Boy, Ford made a great pass. 
Jefferson is deep, and he loses it out of bounds. You know what? I think both guys, Henderson and Jefferson, all they were thinking about was basket instead of catching and then going to the basket. Dale Brown gets the 22nd timeout. You know, Cliff Ellis, when he left Clemson, there were people that wondered, why would you announce prior to the season that that was it? Well, he allowed himself an opportunity to get to a new location. And in the college coaching profession today, that was one of the smartest things he could have ever done. And boy, has is, is it worked out well for both schools. Both Clemson and Auburn came out a winner. Well, don't forget, next Saturday, a doubleheader of Southeastern Conference basketball comes your way. Alabama taking on Ole Miss. It all starts on Saturday at 1 Eastern time, 12 Central. And that game to be followed by more action in the Southeastern Conference, Tennessee and Mississippi State at 3 Eastern, 2 Central time. Transition basketball, Henderson's three off the front aisle. Donald up high. The first of three three-point attempts that he has made. The other two are just like that one, like a line drive. He has five in the game. 19-15. LSU's lead up 12. Whittled down to four. Seven minutes deep and deuce four. It's a run. Brendan Spindler against Weems, who was trying to sneak in the back door there to try to steal it. Transfer from Memphis. His father, a coach at Fairley High School in that uh, great city for high school basketball. Jefferson counted in a foul. Watch underneath as Ford goes strong to the basket with a little kiss right into the bottom of the net. Then on the other end, watch the rebound. Strong move inside by Alvin Jefferson. Roman Rochinko picked up a third foul. Misha Mutovic has come into the game for the first time as the Tigers go as tall as they can go. With Wayne Spencer, 41, checking in in purple and gold, as well as Mutovic. You know, Tim Alvin Jefferson, the young man at the line, was recommended to Cliff Ellis by Miles Patrick, a former player here at Auburn back in the 70s. We take a look at Ruben Rochinko has picked up his third foul. Philip Thomas, number 11 for Auburn, has come into the game for the first time. With this taller lineup, Auburn's pressure will now challenge Maurice Carter, who's wearing number three rather than his normal jersey, number 22. Team manager apparently lost some luggage in Atlanta that included number 22's bag. Henderson falling down knocks it through. Tim, another offensive rebound and stick back by Ronnie Henderson. 11 in the game for Henderson. 23 to 18. Hey, maybe he was taking us literally when he said 46. <laughs> Williams double team. A steal by Spencer. Third turnover committed by Auburn. He is smooth, Spencer. A little beyond his range there, but again, a putback this time. It's Maurice Carter doing the honors. The freshman from Forest Hills High School in Jackson, Mississippi. has yet to get on track. We're going to have a foul on the inside. This is offense. Whoa. Franklin Williams got caught with his chicken wing wrapped around the defender. Don Rutledge right on top of it. We have a timeout. Eight minutes deep at Auburn. It's 25-18. Back after this word from CarQuest Auto Park. My dad's a doctor, and you have to be real smart to be a doctor. Well, my dad fixes cars, and he's a lot smarter than your dad, because a doctor only has two models to fix, men and women, and they never change. My dad has to know how to fix hundreds of car models, and they change every year. Well, my dad helps your dad keep your dad's car running right, and that's his door. CarQuest, preferred by professional automotive technicians. When a traffic jam was two cars in the same town, Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivans, in the first space shuttle, 
and in the tanks of Desert Storm. We've been helping engines last for a long time. Mobile, changing oil for over 125 years. This is one of our downdraft paint booths here at Joe Hudson's Collision Center. It's a very expensive piece of equipment, but that's what it takes to give you a factory quality paint job, and that's why we have five of them. Our computerized paint mixing system uses the same factory paint as Rolls Royce, Mercedes, and BMW, and it carries a national lifetime warranty. Expensive equipment, extensive training. It takes both to do the job right. If you need collision repair, call us, Joe Hudson's Collision Center. SCC Basketball is brought to you in part by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Tim Brando, Larry Conley, happy to have you with us on this SEC Sunday. In the Western Division of the conference, LSU and Auburn, really a quality matchup. These are two teams that match up very well with one another. We expect a close one all the way through. Auburn came in at 14 and 3, LSU at 9 and 6, and both clubs are 2 and 2 in the league right now. You see our halftime score, half -time. Uh, Clemson and Wake. Well, they must be locking up on Tim Duncan to hold them to 14. Penn stayed up on Michigan in the second half. Oh, that's a big surprise for me, anyway. <laughs> Having seen both of those clubs a lot this year. Lutovic, good move. Lutovic using the window. And maybe that'll give the young man some confidence. That's been his biggest problem, getting down on himself early, making mistakes, and becoming foul prone, and a non-factor in SEC games. Tim, he's only got five points in the SEC games he's played in. Lutovic defensively makes the play. Good play. Gets the rejection and leaves it for neighbor. Carter locking up on Bryant Smith. Number 13 in white. Henderson draws the foul. Nice head fake to get Caldwell airborne. And Ronnie Henderson will get the blind. How many times have we seen him do that in his two-plus years at LSU? Ronnie Henderson giving the good pump fake to draw the defense to him, and then once he gets it up, to simply go up and draw the foul. Dale Brown pleased with the Mutavich play, at least so far. As a young man who's averaging 15 points a game in the non-conference schedule, but only adds five points in all of the four games that he's played. The quickness of most of the low-post players in the league have been a problem for him. When playing in non-conference, the game becomes a half-court grinder, and he's more of a factor. Cliff Ellis sends Pat Burke into the lineup now, perhaps to offset Mutavich. 29 to 18, Auburn had cut it to four. LSU has led by as many as a dozen in this game, but the Tigers from Louisiana are now on an eight-nothing spurt and lead it by 11. Caldwell drives right past Carter. Tries to finish and does. A little stick to itiveness for Caldwell, the freshman from Bradley, Alabama. Fighting has got the responsibility now of guarding Henderson. They're over in the corner. Good pass to Mutavich. And he gets it to go. Well, he's playing well today, Tim. Two good offensive moves and a good defensive play. Isn't it amazing what, when something good happens, how it affects you on both ends of the floor? He's made a solid defensive play as well. Now, there's a push-off against Mutavich. That'll be his first. Watch again as the pass comes in from Spencer. That's a terrific pass away from Burke. And Todd has just spun right into the paint and kissed him right off the back of the rim. Dale Brown had high hopes for this young man when he transferred over from Wagner. And there was reason to believe prior to SEC play a year ago. And Todd has been involved in almost every possession. Watch again as he commits this foul here. Here's the... Yeah, that's a foul. He can't push off. An elbow shiver. Brian Smith, a freshman from Huntsville's Butler High School. Seeing action in about seven to eight minutes, if it becomes a question of numbers in today's game, Auburn clearly the deeper bench. So foul difficulty is something Dale Brown has to be aware of as this game progresses. Look at Ford. Oh, all the way to the hoop, Deuce Ford giving LSU a 33-22 lead, and he comes down limping. And we just got a warning from John Clockerty to the LSU team to leave the ball alone when it comes through the net. If they touch it again, it's a technical foul. Deuce Ford, you have to remember, has had some ankle problems. He, too, has been injured and not healthy. He 
had a couple of surgeries himself, much like Livingston, his early days at Memphis. Burke off the back iron. Spencer hauls it down. Ford has size and the ability to do just that in the open court. Oh, the transfer from Memphis made a terrific move there. He's really taking it to the hole strong. Nine points in the game for the Deuce. 35-22, LSU's largest lead. Caldwell. Perry the three. He's hitting 38% from three-point range this year. That's the 62nd attempt he's made. There's the dump down to Carter. The reversal rejected by Burke. Flanagan off to the races. Look out. Block. Julius with the follow. Loose ball to Flanagan. Ford with a reach in yet again. And if Deuce Ford picked that up, that could be his third foul. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think maybe Flanagan might have hurt his arm. Watch Ford go strong to the basket. Once again, showing us his quickness and response to get up to the rim. Watch Flanagan come strong here inside, missing the follow on the inside. Now watch Burke kind of kick it over to the side. Flanagan right there getting it on the arm. Looks like he's holding his left arm and back. It might be his shoulder. That was not good news for LSU that Ford picked up that reach in because now he and Rubchenko, each with three, and we have over nine minutes remaining in this first half. I see, Tim, there's a situation. Deuce Ford knowing he's got two fouls. You've got to avoid that third foul, not go in there and pick that up again. One, no, no. That's Maurice Carter you saw there. Deuce is on the bench with three. 35-26. Neighbors back in at the point with Henderson, Carter, Spencer, and Mutovic. Mutovic again using his body. Pat Burke rips it down. That looks like an old left-hander's fastball. Low and outside. Smith can't hit. I think Carter may have gotten a hand on that one on the way up. Yeah, I think he touched a little bit of it. On the floor for Auburn, Caldwell Flanagan. Adrian Chilius is in there, along with Bryant Smith and Pat Burke. Chilius checking Spencer. Now, with Ford out of the game, you have to look to Ronnie Henderson much more often, don't you? You know, Auburn's playing a matchup zone with four guys, and Flanagan is chasing Henderson man-to-man. -man. Sort of a boxing chaser. Well, it, it's, it's a variation of it. They're actually matching up out of it with those four guys. Burke with the left hand. Good move. Strong power move. The Irishman showing his shillelagh right there. Strong to the hoop. Five in the game for Burke. Break out the mandolin. <laughs> Henderson off the dribble. When Ronnie is forced to shoot off his dribble, he is less effective in the half court. That's when the loss of Livingston really rears its ugly head. Good point, Tim. Chilius into the double team, draws the foul on Mutakic. And that'll be two on him. If he picks up another third, then Brown really has to start considering what he can do with that limited bench of his. Rogers Washington coming back into the game. Tim, already LSU's picked up 10 team fouls, so now Auburn will be shooting two shots the rest of the way this entire first half. 7.26 to go. Dale Brown remains ever positive during the blowout to Kentucky midway through the second half. He went down his bench and talked to his team, and he said, guys, I am more certain now that we're going to return to the NCAAs for the first time in three years after a 10-year run than he'd ever been because he felt that his team really could have been blasted beyond belief in the second half of that game. And he thought they had played hard in that 10-minute period after the intermission. That after being hammered 86-42 to 42 in the first 20 minutes by the Big Blue. Burke, oh, the shillelagh, and the deuce. We'll be back. I was a little girl. This is Sue. Sue is a nationwide insurance agent. Today she found time to hand deliver a homeowner's policy. 
to drop off a check for a customer who filed an auto claim. Hold me. Hold me. She found time to help a family with life insurance. And now she's even found a little time for herself. Or maybe not. Nationwide is on your side. We wanted the LHS to be the kind of car that, even when you're not driving it, you're thinking about driving it. It really was designed to spoil you in every way. An aggressive 214 horsepower engine in front of you, luxury amenities all around. Once you drive an LHS, it's not something you'll soon forget. Nuts and real golden honey make every O so honey nut good. Toasted tasty nutty honey and that's the reason why. Honey O's, Cheerios. You can't resist the honey. With a golden honey O, you couldn't pass them by. Nobody can say no to a honey nut O and a honey nut Cheerios. 35-28, LSU leading Auburn by seven, but... Deuce Ford, four of five from the floor and very active on the glass, forced to sit with a third foul. And you add that to Roman Rubchenko, who at 6'8", certainly is uh, a little outmanned at the center position. Roman Rubchenko forced to sit as well with three. And Mutovic, who's come into the game and been a bit of a factor, there's Roman. He picks up an early two. Coach Brown could run out of a lot of options, and Auburn could really take it inside and hurt the Tigers in the second half. Tim, you make a good point because they've got some strength in there when they've got those guys. They're good rebounders. Rubchenko's been averaging six rebounds a game. Todd Beach is at six. So they need some inside threat. Good board work. Guys like Franklin Williams and Pat Burke can be a much bigger factor in the second half. Quick hands of Philip Thomas forcing that turnover for the Auburn Tigers, number 11 in white. Cliff Ellis' club coming out of the gates sluggish on the offensive end, but gamely staying with it. And there's that Michigan win over Penn State, 67-66. Tim, I got to tell you, I am surprised that Penn State stayed as close as they did. That ball went over the backboard and will be controlled to LSU. I'll tell you one thing about that game. Michigan's got great talent, but Penn State showed me something today going to Ann Arbor and up mm -hmm. there and play them as well as they did. Amazing what's uh, what's happened at Penn State, uh, given the exit of Bruce Parkhill. That was an amazing announcement prior to the season. They've responded in that new building of theirs, though. Great building in uh, State College, Pennsylvania. 35-28, 6.40 and counting in the opening half of the Auburn defense. The matchup, Utavich right over the top of it. Good move. Soft touch in the painted area by the big fella. Franklin Williams back on the floor along with Jefferson. As they try to pound it in. Spencer claims the rebound for LSU. Neighbors on his own. Not there. Bryant Smith, the outlet to Flanagan. And the reach in on Henderson. Most of the fouls against the Tigers have been of the reach in variety. That's the second on Ronnie. Tim, once again, LSU is able to get inside on this defense that Auburn has thrown up against LSU. You see Mutovic simply post on the inside and then turn and make the shot easily over the defense. One of the things they've been able to do, they're using Henderson as kind of a decoy with Flanagan chasing him around. It really opens it up for everybody else if they try to match up with four defenders guarding four offensive guys and Flanagan and Henderson kind of play in their own game. Flanagan playing 34 minutes a game. Can score and score at will, but is uh, usually more capable of doing that in a transition game and allowing Lance Weems to shine in half-court action. 37 to 29, an eight-point lead for LSU. And Weems, picking up the pressure, gets the personal foul. That'll be his first. Team fouls, you see LSU well over the limit. They've committed 11, Auburn with just five. 
That helps you if you're going to press and press with aggression. They've thrown up a couple of zone presses against LSU, and LSU's been able to handle it pretty easily. Now they're going to go straight up man-to-man -to -man tonight, getting to the ball. Lutovich gets it to the center to Mabry. Well, LSU's had no problem with his pressure at all today, Tim. Well, they saw a lot of it on Tuesday night, you know? <laughs> Good steal by Neighbors. What a pass! Oh, Mutovic using the glass, and Neighbors stayed right with it. Credit little number four for that outstanding play. That was a terrific play. Steal and assist. Fresh one possession. Play. Beckley, West Virginia. I've been there, played there. You want to give me the date? High school, babe. I'll call it. <laughs> I'll get the newspaper clippings. Donald leaves it for Weems for three. Ronnie Henderson failed to get over to check Weems in that defensive rotation and got burned. Going up for three. Going in. Ronnie says, if I, if I make a defensive mistake and I want to make the coach happy, I'll go make a three on the other end. <laughs> you see Dale clapping. That's okay. Just make sure you make that shot. Burke's got it against the top. This, well, the two big guys are very active. Burke walks with the ball. Pat Burke played on the Irish national team in the World University Games both last year and in 93. Lock it up. He wants it. Spencer's drive. He was looking for Henderson. Picks up the foul instead. Wayne Spencer picking up his first. Jim, once again, watch Spencer handling the ball. I have said this before about Spencer. I really think he's a, a big guard in a 6'10 body. <laughs> He'd rather be out front playing about 6'5, but he's 6'10. He handles it pretty well. He just got a little bit of control that time. If anyone, if, if he could ever get with a, a team that has a Don Nelson approach to the game where you have a point forward uh, that is easily what he is tough week for the young man his grand uh, grandmother died on this past Tuesday and only practiced one time after that Tuesday and she was very close to, he was very close to her and I, uh, it's a tough week for him and a very tough week he was not notified until shortly after the Kentucky game Franklin Williams gets them both. What a big game against Arkansas, too. 20 points and 10 boards in that win here. Landers Molly in the game for the first time for LSU. Senior that got a lot of playing time last year. Sporadic time so far this season. First time we've seen the shot clock at 10. Neighbors for three. Spencer on the glass. Out of bounds, it will be controlled to LSU. Good possession by LSU that time. They got it down to about six seconds to put a shot up. They kept it alive, and they'll get it back. There's another chance to run it to 35 seconds as Cliff Ellis looks on. You know, without Ford or Rubchenko available to you, not a bad idea to shorten the game a bit. Good idea. Well, Henderson's not in the lineup right now either. Neighbors got it. He has three. And believe me, if they can get points with Henderson, Rubchenko, and Ford not playing, by Louisiana standards, they'd call that lanyard. That would be that would be gravy. <laughs> that would be some gravy, Louisiana style. The dump down to Bird. Neighbors comes away with a loose ball. Now playing a straight up man to man with Henderson out of the lineup. The concentration on the one big scoring player not there, so they just decide to go up and switch when they have to, play the man to man, fight through the screen oh. when they have to. How about Franklin Williams' defense there, huh? I mean, he got right in Spencer's face and said, I'm going to bump you and grind you and make it more difficult. Cliff Ellis applauds the defensive play from his sophomore from Alabama. Cliff Dweller still looking for help. They're down 11.
Ah, to play for a team in the NBA. Taking it downtown, crashing the boards. With DirecTV's NBA Team Pass, at least I can follow any team. Or I can give it the full court press. NBA League Pass. Every team, the Magic, Knicks, Rockets, Suns, up to 30 great matchups every week. Yeah, I could be out there with those guys. Really, I could. You won't find the NBA like this on cable, so call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Right guard, pure power, clear gel. An astoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff protecting one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Right guard, clear gel. Anything less would be uncivilized. Our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week is Ole Miss's Anthony Boone. The sophomore forward from West Helena, Arkansas, has a 3.47 GPA in chemical engineering. Our congratulations to Anthony, our nationwide insurance SEC scholar athlete of the week. You know, Tim, we might have a hard time carrying a conversation with a chemical engineer. I, I don't believe I can reach that level. <laughs> it's this or bust for me, pal. I don't know about you. <laughs> That's terrific. I'm glad to see young men like that uh, getting into fields like that. Good to see our athletes beginning to produce in engineering numbers. Rogers Washington producing from beyond the arc with a tray. 48-34. This is LSU's largest lead in what has been, Larry, a game of runs. And the good news for the Tigers is even with the foul difficulty, the reserves that have come in have played admirably. Burke. Washington lost it on the way up. Look at ever by Washington, though. He and Spencer really have helped Butovich on the inside, and they're rebounding. The freshman out of Franklin, Louisiana, and Hanson Memorial High School is a guy that could really help the Tigers in their stretch run. As you see, uh, some changes. Burke sitting down. Jefferson back into the game. <laughs> Vance Weems on the floor now with Flanagan, Jefferson, Williams, and Bryant Smith. Smith gets the shot. Nice shot. Good penetration by Flanagan and a kick out pass. 48 37, two and a half minutes remaining in the opening half. Utopic on the floor playing with two fouls but with a lot of confidence on the offensive end that was an excellent spin move in the paint to free himself for that pass yeah we give Blaine Spencer credit too he made an awfully nice pass around Alvin Jefferson to allow Mutavis to get up there being checked by Landers Nolly. Williams with a baseline drive. And the foul will go against Dwayne Spencer with a push. Tim Butovich is having a good offensive afternoon off of the bench. You saw that great pass again by Spencer inside away from Jefferson. Here's Dwayne Spencer having a good first half off of the bench. Great All-America from New Orleans that chose Georgetown. Nearly came to LSU originally and then uh, ultimately decided to transfer back. Yeah, if he could pick up an extra 15 or 20 pounds, he really could be something spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. And he still has plenty of time, both this year and next year, to get his act get together. This is a team with a lot more options, Larry, and Maurice Carter being one of those, a freshman, than the one Dale Brown had last year. When he lost Livingston last year and was forced to go with walk-ons and Bosley and Quentin Thomas, not to point the finger at either of those two young men, they did all they could. He's got far more options now without Randy Livingston than he had last year. I agree with that. Nolly 
Nice high pass. Rejected. He was looking for Mutovic. Misha finally gets it, and boy, does he know what to do with it. Oh, what a good afternoon this young man is having in that paint. If you get into basketball, it's almost automatic. That's become a coming out party for Misha Mutovic. This is maybe the best conference game he's played in all plus years. Easily. Certainly the best half. Jefferson's follow won't go. He has 12 points since coming in. And that was after Rubchenko and Ford each picked up three. Well, that's seven more than he got in the first four games that LSU played in this conference. Tigers again by 14, equaling their largest lead. Neighbors caught in midair, had to put it up. Flanagan, push, push, push. Williams not ready for that pass. It's as if the forwards are at 45 RPMs and Flanagan's at 78. Yeah, Williams just, I mean, he captain you fumble a pass like that. I mean, it's an easy one. It's right there at your shoulder. You got a foul, three seconds. Or just a three-second violation. It's time for our Pizza Hut. You'll love this stuff play. Watch again as the ball comes down inside. Mutadic with a good catch. The spin move into the paint. There's our Pizza Hut stuff. Mutadic with a good first half. I'll tell you one thing, he got about every nub of the hair on the top of his head. There's not much <laughs> left up there. Mosley has come into the game. We just mentioned the walk-on. He is a senior out of West Virginia. Junior out of West Virginia, Peyton City. He's into the game for the closing seconds here. Good first half for LSU, Tim. They, play, they played very well on the road here at Auburn in the first half and at Vandy in Nashville. With no Livingston for starters, then Henderson picking up a couple of fouls, Ford with three, Rochico with three. Williams gets the deuce, and Mutovic did a nice job of not picking up a third. Oh! They almost got it! The iron could have been really kind to close the half. Oh, my. The walk-on almost energized Dale Brown's walk-in. And it already had to be a quality walk. A walk with attitude up by 12 at halftime. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Purnell's Old Folks Country Sausage, because it's good. And by Chrysler, leaders in innovative design and engineering. I remember cold winter mornings, biscuits rising high, sausage frying in an old iron skillet, and the twinkle in Grandma's eye. Brunel's old folks' country sausage. The taste takes me back. It all started in my kitchen. Put a twinkle in your eye. Enjoy the great taste of Fernell's Old Folks Country Sausage today. Because it's good. The taste takes me back. Most family sedans will put a driver to sleep. The Chrysler Concord was designed to be a wake-up call for an entire industry. It's the original cab forward design that gives Concord a distinctive look, sports car-like road manners, and all the room you need. Cab Ford has been so successful, other car companies are starting to copy it. To the rest of the automotive industry, this is your wake-up call. Here in the South, we use technology to make our lives easier. And at Bell South, we've developed one of the most sophisticated communication systems in the world people using more advanced features than ever before. So if life seems a little easier here in the South, it's not by accident. It's because we work at it. El South. It's all here. This car is equipped with just about every safety device available today. Like safety glass, airbag, seat and shoulder belts. And the nationwide insurance company fought for every one of them. Unfortunately, the safety device that saves the most lives was ignored. No, thanks. I'm driving. Your nationwide insurance agent urges you not to drink and drive. The challenge? 
combine quality intercollegiate athletics with academic standards of the highest order. For more than 60 years, these fundamentals have fostered a tradition rich with championship performances, scholastic excellence, and legendary leaders. Today, the SEC remains dedicated to the same ideals, for a commitment to excellence endures the test of time. I think a big part of what makes going to LSU so different is the uniqueness of Louisiana. People come to LSU from all over the world, and the atmosphere is a lot of it. The culture, traditions, the history, the whole Louisiana experience is right here. There's a Cajun word, lanyac, that means something extra, and I think that really describes LSU. LSU, as unique as Louisiana. SEC Player of the Week is Alabama freshman guard Brian Williams. Brian averaged 19 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 2 assists in contests against Auburn and Mississippi State. He scored 16 second-half points in Alabama's upset of the 12th-ranked Bulldogs. That's Alabama's Brian Williams, this week's Ford SEC Player of the Week. back at Beard Eves Memorial Coliseum on the most beautiful village on the plains in Auburn, Alabama. And the Tigers from Auburn trailing by a dozen to an LSU team that, Larry Conley, I think you would agree, you figure going in, Ronnie Henderson has to score. He does. Then they go to a special defense to take him away. Once they do, suddenly he gets a lot of help from an unlikely source like Misha Mutovic off the bench. Well, Mutovic comes, comes in and helps them because they were foul problems with Ruchimko going out of there. They needed some strength on and the Ford. inside. And Ford. Yep. Then all of a sudden, he comes in and they're getting the basketball. He did everything right in the first half. Had a couple of big defensive plays. But you know what I think really helped them, Tim, was they beat Auburn's pressure. Yep. And they got over it early, and Auburn has not been able to recover from that. They didn't get the turnovers they've been getting from other teams. You think they practiced that a little bit after the Kentucky game? Maybe. <laughs> Stay with us. We've got a most exciting halftime show yet to come. And the Tigers and Tigers continue with their tale on JP Sports. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer. Peter. What? Peter, try it backwards. Certainly. Question is that be to not or be to. Peter, I meant the pizza. I knew that. Stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With cheese baked right into the crust, you've got to try it backwards. Hot pizza of May, the stuff the love you. The Southeastern Conference enjoys a rich tradition of excellence in both academic and athletic endeavors. A major reason for the success of the SEC is our partnership with some of America's top corporations. As corporation sponsors, these businesses help fund SEC youth clinics, drug education programs, and are the official presenters of each of the men and women's conference championships. The Southeastern Conference is proud to be associated with these companies, which are making a positive contribution to intercollegiate athletics. The schools in the SEC play a vital role in the South. They educate our young adults and entertain us with great sporting events. Golden Flake is happy to be a corporate partner of the Southeastern Conference. Together, we provide college scholarships, sponsor sports clinics, and provide support for drug education programs. Golden Flake and the SEC, two great Southern traditions. This is one of our downdraft paint booths here at Joe Hudson's Collision Center. It's a very expensive piece of equipment, but that's what it takes to give you a factory quality paint job, and that's why we have five of them. Our computerized paint mixing system uses the same factory paint as Rolls Royce, Mercedes, and BMW, and it carries a national lifetime warranty. Expensive equipment, extensive training. It takes both to do the job right. If you need collision repair, call us, Joe Hudson's Collision Center.
We are back in Auburn, Alabama. LSU with a 52-40 lead on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Now it's time for the Jefferson Pilot scoreboard. And with that, I turn it over to Larry Conley. Thank you, Tim. And the final score out of the Big Ten, the Wolverines winning by one over Penn State, 67-66. Over in the ACC, Wake Forest up on or Clemson up on Wake Forest, 36-31 after that very low scoring first half. You can see yesterday's games in the Southeastern Conference. South Carolina big wow. over Alabama, 90-67. And Tennessee with that win over Georgia in Knoxville by five. And Mississippi State going down to Arkansas, 80-68 to over in Fayetteville. And Florida going into Oxford and winning by four. And, of course, Kentucky with that big win over TCU. Back-to-back uh, -back games of over 120. And Vanderbilt, 75-61, going out of conference to play Evansville. Vanderbilt, that is a team well worth watching. Jan Van Bredikoff's got them playing very, very well. Back with more halftime after this. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. F-Series has been the best-selling truck in the world for 19 straight years. Now we're about to launch the next in line. The all-new 1997 Ford F-150. More power. More V8 payload. More new ideas. The new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. Do you know this name? It has a familiar ring to more than a million phone customers around the country. And established success in the fast-moving cellular industry. It's also the name behind a growing number of worldwide information services, putting it near the top of the list in financial performance. So remember, Alltel Corporation. It's a name that could mean a lot for you. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 14, the brain. An active brain, like those found in Advance Auto Parts salespeople, is capable of analyzing any automotive problem. I can't understand why I'm losing compression. In a millisecond, the brain is working, computing options, calculating dimensions, until it comes up with the solution, allowing part number 12, the hand, to take over. Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. SEC Basketball is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. It's time for the Chrysler Plymouth Championship Challenge. Now call toll-free at 1-800-514-HOOPS and vote for the teams you think will win the Southeastern Conference Eastern and Western Division titles. The contest winner will be selected from all correct entries based on a random drawing and will receive a trip for two to the 1996 Direct TV Great Eight Tournament. Voting will end on February 10th. The winner will be announced during our SEC tournament coverage in New Orleans coming up in March. There you see the standings in the SEC right now. Kentucky running away in the Eastern Division. But South Carolina certainly playing well with a very young team. Georgia trying to win on the road after having been very successful at home already this year. The Western Division, Larry, we had a conversation earlier. I really believe any team that can win maybe four or five games consecutively between now and the end of February could likely win the division. Well, I think there are, there are obviously five teams in there that can win that division. The only one that would rule out would be Ole Miss at this point. Mm -hmm. But the other five clubs, any night, they can jump up and grab you. And I agree with you. I think if a club puts together a five-game consecutive winning streak, they got a chance to win that division. Let's take a look now at the numbers in the first half of today's game. LSU getting all of those second-chance points, the pressure that Auburn has given the Tigers' backcourt Ineffective to this point, LSU outglassing Auburn, which is a bit of a surprise. How about the free throws? Auburn to the line 18 times, making 12. LSU there only four times, but they made all four of them. Rebounding in favor of the Tigers. Assists, 15 for LSU in that first half. That means Gene Neighbors and Maurice Carter have been tutored nicely. Well, there's a terrific pass down inside to one of the first half stars for LSU who was Mutovic. Good spin move. Misha puts it in the back of the rim, bottom of the net. 
Flanagan had a great floor game for Auburn in the first half. Four points, but he had five good assists. This was the first basket to start the game. West Flanagan right over the top of the rim. Somehow, Auburn will have to get Lance Weems anchored from beyond the arc and find nothing but nylon if Auburn is to hang in in the second half. The SEC right guard's dual power player of the week is Florida Gator guard Greg Williams. Greg dumped in a career-high 25 points against South Carolina in leading the Gators to their first SEC win of the season. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Red guard, pure power, clear gel. An astoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff protecting one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Right guard, clear jail. Anything less would be uncivilized. Congratulations to Florida's Greg Williams, our right guard pure power player of the week. In his honor, right guard will make a donation to the scholarship funds of the member institutions of the SEC. Right guard. Anything else would be uncivilized. None of these people are giving any thought to their BP gasoline. They're driving with BP Super 93, formulated to clean your engine to deliver optimum performance, which allows you to concentrate on more important things. BP, we keep you moving. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 12, the hand. A remarkable part of every Advance Auto Parts salesperson, the hand can grasp any automotive situation. My car goes... Instantly, the hand tests the electrical system, removes the dead battery, and, with free installation, puts in a new Autocraft battery. All you have to do is shake part number 12. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. You tried multi-grain Cheerios? I did that multi-grain thing back in the 70s. I don't want to do it again. Interesting. Boring. I like them. Only one gram of fat. Yeah, not one ounce of flavor. They're very good. A little sweet. Crunching. Four kinds of O's. Toasted with a touch of brown sugar. Okay, but this will be like deja vu all over again. It's nutritious, but surprisingly delicious. Oh, yeah! It's a 90s kind of thing. I like it. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Pizza Hut, home of stuffed crust pizza. By Alltel, telephone, wireless, information services, we've got it all. And by Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. The announcers for today's game are happy to be selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. I thought, I thought we were going to end the season there. <laughs> Coming up Wednesday night, somebody's going to be happy to be compensated to watch this tilt. Kentucky and Georgia coming your way Wednesday, January 24th, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. That's going to be a fun game to watch because Tubby Smith, the protege of Rick Patino, likes to turn up the pressure, particularly when he's playing at home. Two clubs, the two leading scorers on the Southeastern Conference, both of these teams in Athens on Wednesday night. Don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Dale, Dale Brown, Brown, good first him. half, huh? Indeed, and uh, to have all of this on 53% shooting from the floor. And Deuce Ford unavailable. Ronnie Henderson not playing the last six minutes of the half. Uh, he got more than he bargained for from Mutovic and the rest of the reserve. Gene Neighbors very quietly played well at the point for the Tigers. 17 minutes worth in that first half. Ford's shot rolls off. Ray Donald brings it down. Lance Weems, only three points, one of four shooting, so he's been unable to get free. Williams does so inside as Cliff Ellis' club tries to turn up the heat. Good, good pass by Ray Donald that time. Weems struggled handling the ball in the first half. That time he was able to catch it and go up with it. 
Rogers, Washington back on the floor along with Ford, Rubchenko, Henderson. Tim Auburn's back in that defense again, Rubchenko from the corner. But they're using those four guys to match up again, and once again, finally going on Henderson man-to-man. -man. We'll watch it next time down. Flanagan for three. In rhythm. And Auburn out of the gates with a fast start. I want to correct myself at halftime. I said he had four, he had nine, and now he's got 12. Actually, three out of four from the field, but, boy, he has had a terrific game. They win those 12 points already, five assists. Dale Brown will go to Lutovich, to no one's surprise, very quickly after Auburn out of the gates with the first five points. Henderson's shot not there. Flanagan sneaks out again. Nice recovery by Henderson to get back to shut him down. Burke was taking that shot in the first half. He passed it up there. Williams gets Ruchinko airborne. Using the glass nicely without Mutovic on the floor. The Tigers have surrendered the first seven points of this half. It's a 20-second timeout for Coach Brown. Well, it's the governor. They call him that. Franklin Williams down inside with a good turn to the basket. That's one of them here in the sec second half. Watch him get Robchenko airborne. And again, Rogers Washington in the air, and Williams just floats inside to get another one. Well, all of the precincts are reporting for the governor in the first couple of minutes here in the second half. You had to anticipate that. And I was going to raise this question with you prior to the start of the second half, and perhaps now's as good an opportunity as any. Dale Brown's reserves did such a nice job for him, unexpectedly perhaps, that some of these guys, Rogers, Washington, Henderson, and Ford, they sat for quite a while mm -hmm. in that first half. That can't take some of your game away, can it? Well, you just saw Ford throw up an air ball. Henderson fouled on the way up. He and... Uh, Ray Donald mixing it up a little bit verbally. John Clockerty gets between them in a hurry. Donald gets the foul, his first. Ronnie Henderson again with the inside move. I'll tell you what, somehow or another, he figures a way to get four, five, six, seven rebounds a game. He always is in there around that basket. Even with a great outside perimeter shot, he still manages to get in there and help the big guy. That's the difference between a shooter and a scorer, right? Mm -hmm. Two ugly free throws from Henderson. 52-47. Look at Flanagan push. Nice job by LSU to stop him again. Neighbor's going to back off now. He's going to let Flanagan handle it out front, try to pick him up once he makes the penetration. Flanagan, that's an offensive foul. Nice move by Rufinko playing with three to draw the foul from Flanagan, his first. Yeah, what Auburn will try to do is pick and roll at the top. Flanagan you can use either screen. He used Williams. Rutchenko made a nice move to get in possession, position to draw the foul, and Flanagan ran right over him. It was also a quality flop by Rutchenko, who loses it at midcourt. Flanagan rejected by Mutakic. Got a piece of it. Once again, look at this defense now. Auburn is using. You can see Flanagan on the right side. Watch Henderson make the baseline cut. Flanagan's with him man to man. Everybody else is playing zone. LSU is gone now. Two minutes, 50 seconds of the second half without a scratch. Ford for three. You're going to match up. You better find out the shooters besides Henderson. Ford can shoot it. Oh, that's a trace for the deuce. To make it 55 47. You get good with these numbers. <laughs> Donald got there. Henderson hauls it down. Neighbors. Oh, they are shooting it. Lights out. Well, they were dry early, but they answer from beyond the arc and build that lead back to double digits yet again. Ford and Neighbors, a definite threat out there, as is Henderson. Weems. Not there. Donald. And Mutovic may pick up a foul, either he or Rubchenko. And that is a mistake. Mutovic gets his third. Tim, that's on the defensive end. You see Mutovic go to the offensive end and watch Neighbors throw up a three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. He and Ford with good back-to-back -back threes. 
to give LSU a little bit more opportunity to widen that lead. Now Donald at the line. You see seven points. That gets him his average. He averages eight per game. And Brian Smith now will come into the game for Auburn to replace Donald. Auburn has stayed with this full court pressure throughout the course of today's game. Uh, Cliff Ellis obviously thinks at some point in time the Tigers will have difficulty in dealing with it. Trying to wear them down. Henderson on Flanagan. Off the back iron, Franklin Williams brings it down. That'll be a foul on Henderson. His third. Tim, I think LSU's getting into some serious foul problems here with 16.07 left to go in the second half. And they're, they're poor judgment foul. Yeah, exactly. Henderson did not need to commit that foul. I didn't think anybody, Williams was not going anywhere on that baseline. Four players for LSU with three fouls. And we still have 16 minutes left in this game. Flanagan. Smith. And both Ford and Mutopnitz were in a position to pick up a fourth that time. 58-52. Well, LSU made that run with those two three-point field goals, and Auburn didn't wilt at all. They came right back. Burt doing a nice job of fronting the topic. Watch Flanagan man-to-man -man on Henderson. Neighbors again. Long rebound to Henderson. There's one of those rebounds you were talking about, Larry. And he's everywhere. He finds ways to get to the basket, either from the outside or inside. Ronnie Henderson. He has 18 on the afternoon. A nice curl by Smith. Gives it up to Williams. The dump down to Burke. And on the double team, well, that's going to be the Mutadich or Rubchenko. It will be Roman Rubchenko, number 45 in purple, picking up his fourth foul. 15.09 remaining. Tigers saddled with foul difficulty while clinging to this lead. Ford introduces the all new Taurus for those who want to have it all and take it all with them. For those who have an eye for design and a passion for performance. And for those who want the latest in safety, including standard dual airbags and available anti-lock brakes. The all-new Ford Taurus Wagon. For those whose dreams are a little bigger. Making the dream come true. Our advanced auto parts smart play of the week comes to you from the Vanderbilt, Arkansas game. Check out this picture-perfect Commodore fast break after a turnover. Drew Maddox gets it out to point guard Frank Secker, who pushes it up the floor and delivers the bounce pass to Pax Whitehead for the finish. Take a second look. Maddox gives it up to Secker, who recognizes the advantage and dishes to Whitehead for the layup. With several makeup changes a day, I need a balance deep cleaning with extra gentleness. I need new Gentle Formula Physoderm. The same great cleansing, balanced in a luxurious new formula with gentle skin conditioners. Physoderm clean and gentle. The balance is beautiful. If you're living with pain, you want fast relief. You want Flexol 454. Warm, soothing relief that gets you moving again, working again, enjoying life again. Living with pain? Think fast. Think Flexol. If pro trainers recommend it, you know it's the best. 60 to 52, LSU leading by eight. You look at Cliff Ellis, outstanding coach for many years. It all began for him at South Alabama, then on to Clemson in the ACC, and now here at Auburn. At every level, he has been a winner. He can hum a few bars, too. Mm -hmm. Hit record back many years ago. More years than he wants to admit. You put him on the Florida panhandle, and he'll draw a crowd singing some of that beach music. 
good defense by LSU. Oh, Spencer with a reach in. See, that's the versatility in his game. You mentioned it earlier. He has tremendous possibilities. Neighbors, Spencer, Mutovic keeping it alive. Williams can't run it down. It will be controlled to LSU. That's a good sequence for the Tigers, though they came up empty. You know, the, more, the thing I'm more impressed about with LSU today is the fact on the defensive end, they've really caused Auburn a lot of problems. Every shot they put up, for the most part, has been very difficult to get in there. Timeout called by Deuce Ford as he was trapped and needed some help. 20 seconds. Will be a 20-second timeout for the Tigers. Are they going to take a full? Well, maybe they're going to take a full. They will take the full. And so, I would assume, would we? And we will. Right after this, Tigers holding to an eight-point lead. Dependability. Service. In this business, it's all or nothing. I'll tell Mobile this is Karen. How may I help you? All day, all night, at all of the times you need us the most, all tell Mobile is there. From 24-hour customer service to a full-service facility with experts to meet your needs, our customers want it all, and we've got it all. All things considered, Alltel Mobile has all of your personal communication solutions. Buy any car, truck, or van on our lot and get a free big screen TV installed at your home by Cohen, GM, Ford, Chrysler, Mitsubishi, Toyota, Isuzu, and more. All makes, all models, all under warranty and all at one location. The Auto Mall between Capital Motor Company and Capital Isuzu on the Eastern Bypass. Southeastern Conference basketball on this Sunday afternoon. LSU with an eight-point lead. Tim Brando along with Larry Conley. Happy to have you with us. LSU after the timeout. We'll bring it in. Gene Neighbors finding Ronnie Henderson. He has 18 points in this game so far today. Even against that specialized box and chaser sort of matchup that Cliff Ellis has delivered for him with Wes Flanagan shadowing him. Ford for three. An ugly shot. Lance Weems has numbers. Three on one to Smith. Weems for three. Slip the follow. Oh, he got a break there, didn't he? And ball came right down where no one was standing with a purple jersey. Deuce Ford gets it into the middle to Henderson. He nearly turned it over. Fans wanted to travel. Spencer on the wing. Boy, has he got a nice touch? I mean, for a guy 6'10", didn't he really just play like a, a big guard or a small forward? 62-54. LSU's lead is eight. Williams on the wing. That's a tray. Big Franklin. Hey, he came into this game shooting 52% from three-point range, so he's very capable out there. He now has a dozen in the game. SEC all-academic performer as well. A 3.0 in secondary education. LSU's largest lead was 14. It's been whittled down to five. The Tigers just have not shot as well in this half. Henderson, a tough shot. Now the defense on him is beginning to take its toll. Seven minutes deep into this half. Flanagan lost it. Burke fouled on the way up. Spencer will be guilty. I tell you, they're very lucky because Flanagan actually laid that ball off down on the inside for Franklin we or for, for Burke. And Franklin Williams picked it up. Look at this. Williams comes in and just kind of steals it away, and then Burke draws the foul. Carter coming back into the game to replace Deuce Ford. 
Well, I think it has a tendency at times to get in the air and not be able to go anywhere with the basketball. Needs to learn to keep his feet, make the pass while he's down there. But he's so quick, gets into that lane so quickly. Very difficult for defenses to keep up with him. Burke, a 72% free throw shooter. Fourth in the league in rebounding and has a soft left-handed touch. Utilizes all of the iron there to drop it through. It's now a 62-59 game. They trailed here at Auburn by a dozen at halftime. Cliff Dweller is becoming a much bigger factor now. Spencer up high. Look at the follow. He almost got it. Good rebound by Burke. Burke with the outlet to Flanagan. Crossover. Sweet move. And he draws the foul inside. It'll be against Spencer. That is his fourth. Timmy, you tell me another point guard in the Southeastern Conference that controls the ball as well as Wes Flanagan does. There's the foul difficulty. Spencer having picked up his fourth. Kuchinko saddled with four. Henderson, Ford, and Mutovic all with three for LSU. I really like the way Les West Flanagan plays his game. He really controls it. And Cliff Ellis is smart enough to put the ball in his hands on every occasion. With that blinding speed he's got, he creates a lot of problems for defense. Lance Weems will come into the game. Cliff and his dwellers have raised the level of intensity against the Bayou Bengals in this half. This is a time in the game when you'd really love to have a, a Randy Livingston to deal with pressure. Yeah, but Tim, right now you're going to find out the character of this LSU team. They've got to keep their composure. Mutopic, not there. Henderson again. A tough shot that oh, falls. What oh, an my goodness. Roddy Henderson. Oh. And so many of his points today have come off the offensive glass. Mm -hmm. A dump down to Burke. Good pass to Flanagan. And Spencer is gone. He picked up three fouls, Larry, in less than three minutes to foul out of this game. Now, he's, you know, I've got to say this, but this is an experienced player. He's got to know that he's got those fouls and avoid that situation. It's going to force him to go to the bench. And he only had two points, but against this kind of pressure, a guy like Spencer is really helpful to you. So losing him defensively is very important. And it should help Auburn in this pressing style of theirs. Rogers Washington checks into the game for him. Williams in traffic. To Burke. 64-63. Sing it down. Ford operating at the point now with Carter, Henderson, Washington, and Mutovic on the floor. Weems with a near steal. Save to Carter. That'll be a block on Burke. Take a look at our all-tell play of the game as Franklin Williams, the governor, finds the big Irish guy that can plant it home. Watch Pat Burke. Nice pass inside, and Burke, nothing but the bottom of the net. Yeah, that's your all-tell play of the game. Pat Burke, strong to the bottom of the cords. Alvin Jefferson comes into the game to replace Burke. That was a great find by Franklin Williams. Mm -hmm. Good pass. Mutovic really wants it. Auburn's half-court defense is excellent in this sequence, but there's Henderson finding a seam somehow. Pulled down by Alvin Jefferson. Flanagan. Williams. Washington should pick that one up. It'll be three seconds. Not three, three seconds. seconds. Yeah, they got three-second call on him. They could have got him for hops as well. That pressure really beginning to take its toll on LSU. They're 
managing to break the press, but far more difficult here in this half than it was in the first. Mutovic gets a fourth foul in frustration after missing a tip, and that has been his M.O. throughout his SEC career. Yeah, that's the one you got to avoid. Watch again. Here's the miss. Close call inside. Mutovic with a nice controlled tip, and then he just simply reached up and grabbed the head of Alvin Jefferson. When things tighten up, that's when Misha has difficulty. And they have certainly tightened up in this half. But Tim, it's the, it's the point I made earlier. You've got to keep your composure in a situation like this. You've had the lead. Yes, you've lost it. Yeah, you're on foreign territory. But this is an LSU team that has played very, very well for 30 minutes. Right now, they've got to look to their leaders out there, and then it's got to be Henderson and Ford. Tigers clinging to a one-point lead as they miss the free throw. Ford, a solo. Rogers, Washington can't come up with it. Does manage a save, and there's a pass stolen by Jefferson. If Auburn gets the lead, and now they do, look out. They may tear the roof off of the Beardies Coliseum. Mutov has almost lost the basketball. Heads up and alert play by Maurice Carter to come back and get it. Washington had it deflected. Ford gets the loose ball. Oh, boy, what an opportunistic move. Ford right where the ball was. 14 in the game for Deuce. 66-65 LSU. 9.45 and counting remaining in our game. Wings. Bad shot. That one wasn't even close. If he ever does find the range, it could be over in a hurry for LSU. That's a reach in on Flanagan. Because Auburn has made this run really without Wings being a major factor on the offensive end. Jim, I want to make a point right here about Auburn and Tony for West Lanning. The fact that he's been able to not only run this club offensively, but he's also had the responsibility of guarding Ronnie Henderson on the defensive end. That's a lot to ask of a guy to run your club and then play the best offensive player in this league. Roman Rochinko has checked into the game now, replacing the top pitch, who obviously is winded. Ford lost it. Caldwell on the move. Off the back iron, Ruchinko claims it. Boy, he had wings wide open in that left corner, decided to take it himself. Question that decision. Ruchinko can shoot from there. Off the back iron. Auburn has reclaimed the lead only once in this half, and the Tigers answered, and were stuck on 66-65 for at least two minutes, as both teams have had some empty trips. Reams. Shot clock drifting down to 10. For three, and again Flanagan with a poor shot. it down and a turnover oh what a turn of events the missed shot forced Weems to throw up a three he stuck it in the bottom of the net and they get another turnover Tim the shot clock actually expired you see the zero as the ball goes through the net and uh Pulling all the strings, the maestro getting the dwellers up. And a foul on the other end. And Flanagan with a reach in. That's his third foul. So the LSU gets a break as Auburn turns it over with an opportunity to get a possession up in this game. Chilius leaves, as does Alvin Jefferson. Williams, Donald, Burke, Flanagan, and Weems on the floor for the Auburn Tigers now. One of those games where 
without Randy Livingston, your leader emotionally, if LSU gets down by more than a couple of buckets, Auburn could run away with it. Henderson trying to post Flanagan inside. Burke's there to help. Ford for three. Off the back end. Flanagan. Right past Neighbors. Would have counted had it gone, and if that's Rubchinko's personal, it is his fifth, and he's history. It is, and he's gone. LSU running out of bodies down low. We thought that would be a concern in the second half with the way the first half had been going for the Tigers, even with that double-digit lead. And boy, has it become an ugly reality for Dale Brown. Tim, once again, it was Flanagan pushing the ball up the floor and going by Neighbors. I don't think Neighbors has the quickness to stay with Flanagan once he decides to put it in an extra gear. And LSU's had to come over and help him on a number of occasions, but what's Flanagan having a terrific floor game. And Tobitz is going to come into the game, and he, too, has four fouls. You see, this is a situation where Misha really has to watch himself. They know they're in trouble. They've already lost a couple of guys to fouls, guys that help on the inside. So Misha's got to play in such a way that keeps him in the game. This is a, a game in which Mutovic has played a lot of minutes, Larry. And in an SEC play, since the lineup change was made prior to Alabama, he hasn't seen many minutes during the course of games, let alone crucial minutes. Mm -hmm. 70-66, Auburn with its largest lead. Now, how do the Tigers from Baton Rouge respond? We'll soon find out. Ford Credit and Ford Division announced the Great Percent Event, reducing interest rates to just 4.8% APR for 48 months, or choose $600 cash back on a purchase or a red carpet lease. It's your choice on 10 of America's most popular 96 Ford cars and trucks, including Taurus, Contour, Windstar, Escort, Ranger, and more. The Great Percent Event at your Ford dealer now. Hurry, offer in soon. makes a Dairy Queen frozen birthday cake so special? First of all, it's made with lots and lots of delicious Dairy Queen chocolate and vanilla soft serve. Everybody's favorite. Plus, there's a layer of chocolate fudge and chocolate crunch. But the icing on the cake is you can get it decorated our way or your way. The Dairy Queen birthday cake. There is no other birthday cake quite like it. We treat you right. Dairy Queen. Get the latest information on the 1996 SEC Men's Basketball Tournament in New Orleans on the World Wide Web. This website includes up-to-date stats and information on every SEC team, plus New Orleans lodging and restaurant information. Be sure to experience SEC tournament time like never before on the World Wide Web. And if you want to know about the restaurants, just give Larry Conley, Tom Hammond, or your And Tim Brando yeah, a call. A call. We'll help you. Yep. I think we ought to write a book between the three of us. I think we've been in every restaurant in New Orleans. Mutovic gets it in. This is an 18-6 run, and there's the turnover. And a foul on Landers Nolly. Steal by Wings down inside. The second half field goal percentage shooting. LSU 24%. Auburn 10 of 19 at 53%. They really turned the tables. LSU was shooting 53.8% in the first half of this game. And now Lance Weems at the line. You look at Auburn getting to the line far more often in this game. Deuce Ford comes in and Rogers Washington checks out. It's been a tough day for Washington, the freshman out of Franklin, Louisiana. They were hoping that he could play at a higher level today with the loss of Livingston. It, it puts so much more added pressure on the role players for the Tigers when Livingston's unavailable. Weems gives Auburn a five-point lead. If you look at Randy, reduced to another assistant coach 
on the sidelines today. The six-point lead and the pressure. This is the most likely guy to handle it, right? Right. You, you got to let neighbors and four, the two guys, to bring it up. Watch Henderson try to get away from Flanagan. He held him. That's the fourth foul on Flanagan. So with that difficult assignment of shadowing Henderson in a box and one sort of style. Well, they may want to decide to put somebody else on him and maybe give Flanagan a blow. That's exactly what they're yep. going to do. And again, you said they've been matching up out of that zone and allowing him to shadow Henderson. With that comes some foul. Mm -hmm. Plus, it wears you down. I mean, Henderson's such an active player. It's not like he just stands around. Burt gets in the way of that pass, and it was a poor decision by Nader. LSU surrendered the lead at 67-66, and the moment Auburn got a two-basket edge, you had a feeling that LSU could wilt, and that is apparently what's happening, at least for the short term. Burt with a good, strong rebound inside, and Auburn gets to reset the offense. Williams for three. The blitzkrieg may indeed be on. 75-66. Now they're trying to find Henderson. Henderson's posted up. With the double team. Nice and tip in by Ford. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Great tip in. You know, and he waited for the ball to get outside the cylinder. Mm -hmm. 75-68, that was a must basket. What a pick by Williams on Neighbors. Confusion underneath. And a foul spotted against the Tigers. Jim Burr will whistle inside. It'll go against Ronnie Henderson. Watch again as Henderson makes the move to the inside and watch Ford with a good offensive tip. Let's look at the screen that Dale Brown was complaining about. Oh, oh, oh boy, did he ever get neighbors. Whoa, strong, strong pick. It was clean and authoritative. You see Coach Brown chatting with one of his assistants, Bob Starkey, Johnny Jones, his former point guard on his first Final Four team. He was a freshman that particular year in 81. A part of that staff. Well, the Cliff Dwellers have had plenty to crow about. In the last three minutes of this half, it was 52 to 40 at halftime. LSU has been outscored 36 to 16 in this half. They just reversed the field goal percentage shooting. You know, LSU shot so well in the first half, above 50 percent. Auburn was at 20, 36 percent. Now they just turned it completely around. And the the pressure. The press that they were breaking so easily in the first half, when the crowd got involved and the run began, LSU began to wilt under that pressure. The feeling that after a while, Cliff Ellis's team would get uh, the Tigers from LSU to run out of gas. And to some extent, it's come to fruition. Washington back into the game for LSU. Landers Nolly sits down. But Tim, right now, this lineup that Dale Brown has in there, Neighbors, Ford, and Henderson, all three capable of handling the ball. And they've got two pretty strong players inside. The biggest problem is Mutavich with those four fouls. We'll have an overrule here, I believe. John Clockerty saw a deflection that Don Rutledge didn't see. And there is the overrule. Three tremendous officials working together, and there's Cliff Ellis trying to get the crowd involved again. He's not trying to fly out of the building. Henderson off the pick. Long rebound to Mutovic. Ford on the drive with Donald. Boy, oh, what a move. Up. Mutovic trying to keep it alive. Donald finally corrals it for Auburn. That'll be a foul on Mutovic in his history. And just what you spoke of earlier, a foul off the ball, absolutely needless. Jim, and, and there's a situation where they need him on the floor. I mean, he's had a terrific afternoon. So for all of the good work in the first half, the memory he may have will be this half. 
And once again, Dale Brown will have to do damage control. So now he's got three guys over on the bench who can't come back. Who do they send in inside in the post position to play? The call will come to Nick Shepard. The 32 in purple, another freshman out of Barb High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Considered a project with a great deal of athletic capability. One well worth bringing in at 6'9", 250 pounds. Has been little used this year. That's right. Well, with uh, all of the fouls cropping up in the first half, seldom used players would, would get an opportunity today. That was obvious early and often in this game. Lance Weems will check in for Auburn. Burke has 11 points already. He's got a ton of rebounds, too. And the lead is 11 points. Washington draws the foul, going to the hoop hard. I think Weems picked that one up. Good move by LSU, quickly up the floor. That's two on Lance Weems. Watch Weems pick up his second foul right here. Good strong move. You see the foul from behind. Got him on the head. So Washington will go to the line. LSU has struggled at the, the line here in this half particularly. One of four in this half. <laughs> it's music to his ears. That, you get the feeling that Cliff, is Cliff Ellis doing his impression of the War Eagle over there. <laughs> Got some wingspan over there when he's uh, orchestrating the crowd. Wings runs away from neighbors. You can't play like that on Wings. You got to play him straight up and keep him from shooting that shot. Ooh, good play by Ford. Cradled it, finds Shepard with a reversal. Good play by Shepard. 81-71. The lead is 10. Auburn seizing control of this game with its pressure in the second half. Trailing by a dozen at halftime. Philip Thomas on the floor, number 11 in white. Tim, I think Lavellis is trying to get a little half-court game going now. He'd like to kind of use the clock. Thomas the jump stop. And he draws the foul from Shepard. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a BP best player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, BP and its dealers contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institution's scholarship funds under a conference approved plan. Thomas out of Lafonia, Georgia. Freshman. Ooh, that one hurt. That was, uh, I think that hurt the backboard. The iron wasn't unkind. The backboard was downright rude. <laughs> <laughs> 0 for 2 at the stripe for Thomas. LSU with a chance to cut it to Kevin, single digits. Right now is when LSU needs to start to make their move. That's a good start for them. Neighbors gets a three. And they can come with some pressure after a made basket. Well, they get the type of lineup that can do that right now. Go, 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 81-74. And a 22nd timeout taken by Cliff Ellis. What a good move right there. He wanted to get Flanagan back in the game before things got any worse. That is what we've seen the coaches at the collegiate level do with the 22nd timeouts. It's a damage control thing now. I think last year they had to adjust to having the 22nd timeout. 20 seconds are also good for television because we get to tell you about upcoming games like Alabama and Ole Miss on Saturday, 1 Eastern, 12 Central. And that'll be followed with Tennessee and Mississippi State. Kevin O'Neill and Richard Williams leading their troops into that game. Mississippi State out to a bit of a disappointing start in the conference. 
They've even had problems winning at home, something Cliff Ellis knew he needed to stay away from today. Do you think Mississippi State's uh, expectations were a little too high this year, or do you think uh, they are a disappointment? I think they are a disappointment, at least at this stage. Smith puts it in. I felt they were an overlooked team the last couple of years. I thought they were better the last couple of years than people around the country wanted to give them credit for. Neighbors, not there. I mean, when Wilson can't get a shot off, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Burke straight. Oh, Pat Burke. A little boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. What a great pass by Flanagan. 86-74. Foul inside against Burke. He was feeling it. The adrenaline flow was oh, yeah. to take its toll. I'm going to tell you what, he was so high on that duck. I think that adrenaline, it's going to stay up there pretty high. Yeah. As high as it can get. Brian Smith gets the foul rather than Burke. Oh, planning a straight to Burke. Oh, strong move. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, Ronnie Henderson, you, you simply, if you shoot as well as he does, you've got to make those shots at the line. But he does struggle to free throw line. He really does. Shooting 66%. Makes absolutely no sense. Weems, the duck under, and the deuce. You go for the fake on Weems, he'll burn you. 88-74. Henderson for three. Big basket. Oh, Ronnie Henderson. It's an absolute must with 322 to play. Get him on his striking distance. Good look to Burke again. Good pass out. Once again, wants to pull it out. Run some clock. The planning can handle neighbors. The dump down leads to a turnover. And LSU gets it back. 2.52 remaining. Boy, has Auburn turned the table in the second half? And how? None of these people are giving any thought to their BP gasoline. They're driving with BP Super 93, formulated to clean your engine to deliver optimum performance, which allows you to concentrate on more important things. BP, we keep you moving. Do you know this name? It has a familiar ring to more than a million phone customers around the country. And established success in the fast-moving cellular industry. It's also the name behind a growing number of worldwide information services, putting it near the top of the list in financial performance. So remember, Alltel Corporation. It's a name that could mean a lot for you. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 23, the foot. Advance Auto Parts salespeople come equipped with two feet capable of propelling them out the door to your car. It seems like I'm feeling every bump in the road. Step by step, your car is inspected. With your problem understood, it's just a short walk back to the parts department. At Advance Auto Parts, no one sits around on part number 41. Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. SEC Basketball is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Auburn has outscored LSU 48-25 to in this half. Ronnie Henderson having to shoulder so much of the scoring responsibility and Wes Flanagan checking him so admirably. That, along with the total team effort defensively, meaning a lot. As we reset it, three timeouts for Auburn, two for LSU remaining. And they're likely to use them as Neighbors hits yet another three. Team Neighbors keeping the Tigers in it. He has 11. Yeah, Neighbors has been real good the last couple of minutes, keeping his club at least within striking distance. Williams backing in with that size. Gives it up to Flanagan. Nice move by Wes. See, Tim, I think Flanagan needs to do more of that. I think he gets a little too unselfish and overpasses once he gets inside. He's got open shots he's got to take. He has nine assists today. 90 to 80. Henderson. Oh. Been a 
concentrate threes for Azusas. Let's see. 90 to 83, two minutes left. They're going to try to play straight up defense and allow Auburn to use the 35 second clock. And believe me, they will exhaust it. Williams sets the pick. Gets it inside to Williams. Oh, that's a nice move. He doesn't finish. And then Burke gets the offensive rebound. A breakdown by Washington. Neighbors clears to Henderson. The Tigers are within five. LSU down 90 to 85 with a minute 18 remaining. Well, here's where having Flanagan is really an important plus. And not having Randy Livingston a detriment to LSU. But Neighbors has really played well in the last few minutes. Uh, he has, but defensively, it's so hard for him to keep up with Flanagan. That's why you like to have a, an experienced guard out front. Ford comes to give help, picks up the foul. That should be his fourth and his. 53 seconds remaining. Sometimes when you get a lead, Larry, in a game like this, particularly when you've got the kind of athletes both of these teams have, it can be fool's gold. And for LSU, while they had a 12-point lead, the flow of the game and the fouls they were giving up led you to believe that, in fact, a, a lead, of, albeit a double-digit one, could be fool's gold. Andy Livingston doing all he can to help his mates make the right decisions down the stretch. Boy, uh, Lady Luck has not shined brightly on his career. Turn in. 91-85. Ford needs help. Finds it from neighbors on the wing. Not there. Ford. And Henderson will be fouled by Wayne. Once again, Henderson in the middle of that inside battle. Somehow or another, he always finds a way to get inside. Looks like he might have hurt his wrist. Yeah, he's holding that right wrist. Watch the battle as Auburn and LSU go to war on the backboard, and Henderson's there, and Weems fouls him as he starts back up. And he is smarting. He's not had much success at the free throw line today. Oh, he's two for five. Missed his last two at a crucial time. Maybe that injury to his wrist straightened it out. Yeah. It's an aspect of the game. The athletes are better. The basketball they play far better. And an aspect of the game that has really gone down in recent years, free throw shooting. Mm -hmm. Great. With uh, every team at the Division I level. Carter comes in. It's a four-point game with 40 seconds left. An offensive for defensive substitution. Henderson does have four fouls. There's the pressure. Franklin Williams nearly lost it. Rogers Washington will get the reach. His first. It stops the clock with 36.2 remaining. Auburn will be forced to make some free throws down the stretch. Yeah, but Tennessee's a pretty good free throw shooting team. They came in third in the league before the game, and they've got several guys out there that can shoot well. Franklin Williams is 72% free throw shooter. Always nice to have two shots, too. You can make sure you know you're going to get another one, even if you miss the first one. You know, it always seems that Auburn has the Franklin Williams kind of player. Aaron Swinson, I think, uh, fit the bill of a Franklin Williams. Sort of a 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, wide body mm -hmm. that can post up and also beat you facing the basket. 93-87. Ford for three. Well off. Neighbors behind the arc. Off the back iron, and that should just about do it. Weems gets to play keep away. Smith rejected by Shepard. Whoa, was that a rejection? Shepard almost threw that one into the dressing room. Big time block. Well, a few SEC teams may fall out of the top 25, but Auburn won't. Ford for three. Off the back iron yet again. 
Tigers shooting woes were a major problem down the stretch. And a 12-point lead evaporated quickly. And the Cliff Dwellers get their moment to celebrate. A lot of heroes in this game today for Auburn. Cliff Ellis' club continues to play well. They're going to win their 15th game and go to 3-2 in the league, Tim. You see him waving to the crowd. It's as if uh, Cliff Ellis walks into a room here at Auburn and uh, you'd think he's on a float. He's waving to everyone on a first-name basis with the student body. He's a people person, and they love that here in Auburn. He and Terry Bowden, I think, are two of the brightest, youngest, most personable people you can find in head coaching. It's over, and the Auburn Tigers go to 15-3. and three. Dale Brown's LSU Tigers drop to 9-7. and seven. But certainly a game opponent today without their star, Randy Livingston, available to them. 95-87, our final. We'll be back to wrap it up after these messages from your local SEC station. You're a decision maker, sir. You bet I am. And you decided your favorite Blizzard flavor treat is Butterfinger Candy. Yes, I have. How about Heath Bar? Yes, I said that. Heath Bar is my favorite. Or maybe the fruit nut flavors. Yes. It is hard to choose. They're all so rich and thick you have to spoon them out. Even this Oreo cookie. Oreos, as I said. Yes. And maybe you'd like this oh, one. Yes. You've decided? Yeah. The one and only Dairy Queen Blizzard. We treat you right. <laughs> Deadbolt. I just smashed the door in. You have good reason to want more home security these days. I could pick most locks with a credit card. And there's never been a better time to get more security. Because right now you can have an ADT SafeWatch Plus home security system installed for only $99 plus monthly monitoring. They were asleep. They didn't even know we was in the house. The system links your home to our ADT monitoring center, where security professionals watch your home whether you're there or not. When trouble strikes, ADT can respond to break-ins, fires, even medical emergencies. I know when you're home and when you're not. Call now and save $100 off the regular $199 installation price. Plus, take advantage of ADT's best price guarantee. We will not be undersold. ADT, there's no safer place to be. SEC Basketball was brought to you by Altel. Telephone, wireless, information services, we've got it all. By Direct TV, it's personalized TV. And by BP Oil, makers of high-octane BP Super 93, our best gasoline. BP, we keep you moving. Speaking of BP, here's a look at our BP best players for today's game in this 95-87 victory for the Auburn Tigers. Larry? Well, you can take a look. These two guys played great today. Ronnie Anderson with 30 points. He almost got to the 46, we asked him. And Wes Flanagan, 21 points, 10 of 13 free throws, and a big nine assist. He had an outstanding floor game. Perhaps the saddest news for head coach Dale Brown is that without Randy Livingston, Ronnie may need 40 or more to be in most games, particularly on the road in the SEC. For Larry Conley and our entire Jefferson Pilot sports crew, these are the people that help bring you this telecast. Roger Roebuck and Tim Walbert calling the shots in our truck. This is Tim Brando saying so long. It's Kentucky and Georgia coming up on Wednesday. Another opportunity for you to have the chance to be watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference.